See, we never thought we'd do a top 20. Where we come from, some get half as many. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Hamilton songs. Now Hamilton's skill with the quill is undeniable, but what do we have in common? We're reliable with the ladies! For this list, we'll be looking at the best songs from an incredible score written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes, they're all the best. We will never be satisfied. Number 20, Alexander Hamilton. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman Dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean By providence impoverished and squalor Grow up to be a hero and a scholar The song that started it all. When Lin-Manuel Miranda performed the song at the White House in front of President Obama, nobody had any idea of the kind of success Hamilton would have. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came and the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Miranda began working on this song and a few others as part of a Hamilton mixtape, while reading through the biography of the Treasury Secretary by Ron Chernow, but eventually decided to make the whole thing a musical. This song is brilliant, handily setting up the tone of the show, introducing the central players, while recapping Hamilton's heartbreaking yet incredible early life in under five minutes. I'm the damn fool that shot him. Number 19, Aaron Burr, Sir. While short, this song packs a lot of impact. In it, Hamilton's two main characters and their philosophical differences are properly introduced. Aaron Burr is content to sit quietly and see where the cards fall before choosing a side, valuing peace and comfort over conflict and justice. Talk less. What? Smile more. Huh. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for. Alexander Hamilton, on the other hand, bursts onto the scene, immediately interested in getting involved in the revolution, and who will speak his mind to anyone who will listen, and even those that won't. We also meet key players John Lawrence, Marquita Lafayette, and Hercules Mulligan. Having sized Burr up, Hamilton asks him, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what'll you fall for? This poignant question will haunt Burr's choices throughout the rest of the show. If you stand for nothing, Burr, what'll you fall for? Who, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who, who is this kid? What's he gonna do? Number 18, It's Quiet Uptown. There are moments that the words don't reach. Even though we can't listen to this song without ugly crying, it's hard to deny how beautiful it is. After the devastating loss of their son Philip, Alexander and his wife Eliza grieve all that has happened to them. This song presents an entirely different Alexander Hamilton. Normally so rowdy and energetic, here he is beaten and quiet. As is Miranda's genius, Hamilton borrows a theme previously sung by Eliza and that would be enough to try to do the unimaginable. Just let me stay here by your side. That would be enough. Perhaps the most beautiful moment is when Eliza finally grants Hamilton forgiveness by taking his hand. She takes his hand. It's quiet up to forgiveness. Watching Alexander weep softly, mourning all that he has lost, in large part due to his own actions sends chills down your spine. But knowing there might be some hope for the couple keeps us watching to the end. Number 17, Dear Theodosia. Dear Theodosia, what to say to you? As Lin-Manuel Miranda calls it, Dear Theodosia is the calm in the storm of the show. 
Hamilton and Burr, two orphans, sing this ballad to their respective children, promising to be there for them no matter what and to make the world a better place. This song beautifully captures the sincerity in both Hamilton and Burr. They are both trying to build a better world for their children. They just have different methods. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll make a million of mistakes. I'll make the world safe and sound for you. This song becomes heartbreaking in retrospect, knowing Philip's fate, and perfectly sets up Hamilton's depression. When Philip is born, he becomes Hamilton's soul. Number 16, You'll Be Back. Say the price of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay. Did somebody say British invasion? In a musical filled with hip hop and rap, King George III's songs serve as a fun little break a la Beatles, which is an ingenious way of separating the feel of the revolutionaries and the empire they're trying to break away from. You'll be back soon, you'll see. You remember you belong to me. While George's two reprises, What Comes Next and I Know Him, are both awesome, wow, as well, it's hard to top the original for how much it delights and surprises the audience with a fun change of pace. Fun fact, Miranda said that the idea for the name came from a conversation with Hugh Laurie when he said he had an idea for a breakup letter from King George to the colonies. Laurie's response was, you'll be back. Number 15, The Election of 1800. The Election of 1800. Can we get back to politics? Uh, please. Yo. Marking the culmination of the political careers of both Burr and Hamilton, this song is fun, educational, and incredibly important for both characters. Beyond the story implications, this song also contains critical commentary on the state of politics. As we hear citizens debate which candidate seems more fun to have a beer with, rather than which has better policy or leadership abilities. He seems approachable. Like you could grab a beer with him. Dear Mr. Hamilton, your fellow federalists would like to know how you'll be voting. Their opposing ideals come to a head here, even if they won't physically duel it out until a bit later. Except now, they've swapped approaches. Burr is almost reckless in reaching his goal, while Hamilton is the one keeping his thoughts to himself, almost unreadable. When all is said and all is done, Jefferson has beliefs, Burr has none. Finally, Hamilton makes the decision that he'd rather have someone with disagreeable principles than no principles at all, opting to endorse Jefferson and sealing his fate with Burr. Ooh, you know what? We can change that. You know why? Why? Because I'm the president. Burr, uh, when you see Hamilton, thank him for the endorsement. Number 14, What Did I Miss? Set, set, 17, set, set, 17. 1789. Thomas Jefferson's introduction to the stage and the start of Act Two is a great time. baseline in the background helps guide us on a fun journey to discover where exactly Jefferson was during this whole revolution. David Diggs, the original actor, did a phenomenal job giving Jefferson a magnetic and electrifying personality, making him someone you could not take your eyes off of. I've been fighting for the South alone. Where have you been? France West. We have to win. What did I miss? As introductions to characters go, this might just be the best in the whole damn musical. And it briefly sets up initial tensions between Hamilton and Jefferson, as Hamilton cuts into his song, forcing his own melody in. Welcome home, Mr. Jefferson, indeed. Mr. Jefferson, welcome home, sir.
Number 13, say no to this. There's nothing like summer in the city. Uh, Hamilton, why? With an entire chorus screaming at him to say no, you'd think he'd listen. When the irresistible Mariah Reynolds catches Hamilton alone, he enters into a torrid affair that will destroy his political career and obviously his personal relationships. No, no, say no to this. I wish I could say that was the last time. I said that last time it became a pastime. This song has a seductive and sinister vibe as we're drawn along with Hamilton into the sex and intrigue of the Reynolds. Apart from being a powerfully important song, it's also just so groovy and catchy. How could you listen to this and not shout say no to this along with Hamilton? I don't say no to this, there is nowhere I can go. go, go, go. So? Nobody needs to know. Number 12, One Last Time. I'm stepping down, I'm not running for president. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> One last time. Relax, have a drink with me. One Washington's time. emotional farewell is a powerful ode to America's first president. George Washington's decision to step down was important, as it set up the idea in American history that there should be a peaceful transition of power. The humility and confidence of the figure to step down begins a precedent that all future presidents would follow with varying degrees of grace. It's masterfully performed, and Washington and Hamilton read over the farewell address together, its lyrics pulled from the historical text. In the midst of my fellow citizens, the benign influence of good laws under a free government, the ever-favorite object of my one last time moves the audience and forces them to consider a world with just, fair leaders who try to do the right thing and recognize when they didn't. A recognition of their humanity. Say goodbye one last time. Number 11, Nonstop. After the war, I went back to New York. Uh, after the war, I went back to New York. The epic first act finale number is just incredible. How to account for his rise to the top? Man, the man is nonstop. Act one of Hamilton is an explosive revolutionary ride, and thus its conclusion deserves an equally explosive number that is truly nonstop in every sense of that phrase. How do you ride that tomorrow will arrive? The way it references so many other songs, themes, and moments, the way it overlaps different ideas over top of one another, the way it culminates in a jaw-dropping finish where the entire cast sings different harmonies, the foreshadowing of the gunshot, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> This song is so complex that you can discover something new about it with each listen. I am not throwing away my shot! <laughs> Number 10. Who lives, who dies, who tells your story? Let me tell you what I wish I'd known When I was young and dreamed of glory You have no control Who lives, who dies, who tells your story This somber reflection of Hamilton's life Accomplishments and Legacy perfectly sums up the core themes of the show, and explains what happens after Alexander passes. Hamilton's legacy diminishes, though thanks to the efforts of Eliza, he and others are remembered. But the most touching part comes when Eliza announces what she's proudest of the first private orphanage in New York City. We help to raise hundreds of children. I get to see them growing up. In honor of her love for Hamilton, the bastard orphan, she helps take care of hundreds of orphans. 
From her asking to be part of the narrative, to taking agency to be removed from it, Eliza has ended up its author. Number 9. Helpless This upbeat pop song shows a dramatized version of the events leading to Eliza and Alexander's wedding and gets the audience invested in their relationship immediately. Their joy and love for one another is infectious, and it shows the innocent side of Eliza. She's found a wonderful boy, and now this boy is all hers. There's no hint of the emotional trauma and responsibility she will soon have to bear. Here, Eliza is helpless to Alexander's charms to the love she feels for him. It serves as a wonderful contrast to the different kind of helpless Eliza feels later. In New York, you can be a Number 8. Burn I saved every little you wrote me Juxtaposed with the happy Eliza from before, we have this tragic song. After Hamilton's betrayal, and the shocking choice to publish the details of his affair, we have a moment to see how Eliza handles it all, something that wasn't really recorded in history. Let future historians wonder how Eliza reacted when you broke her heart. You have torn it all apart. Heartbroken. Eliza removes herself from the historical narrative and Hamilton's legacy, taking control away from Alexander and from others to use her in this political game that destroyed her life. You forfeit all rights to my heart. This song is genuine, raw, and powerful, and it's astounding to see this all come from the normally polite Eliza. Her last words, directed to Hamilton, are especially and ironically chilling. I hope that you Number 7, The Room Where It Happens. Ah, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Burr, sir. Hey, did you hear the news about good old General Mercer? No. You know Aaron Burr watches and waits throughout Hamilton's meteoric rise to power, and this is the moment where he finally allows his envy and ambition to get the better of him. Burr laments that he has no say in any important matters of state, locked out of the room where it happens. No one really knows how the game is played, the art of the trade, how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens, but no one else is in the room where it happens. Beyond the brilliant themes, the jazzy showstopper feel to it makes it one of the most fun numbers in the whole show. This song perfectly foreshadows that this is the turning point in which Burr and Hamilton will now be at odds. Paradoxically, because they've become more like each other. The final click boom is telling of where this decision will lead her. Number 6. Guns and Ships Don't lie, you've tried and failed to rap Lafayette's verses as fast as he does it. It's okay, we've all been there. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting friends! This number is incredibly impressive, and Marquis de Lafayette's verses hold the record for the fastest Broadway rap. In the fastest parts, he's rapping 6.3 words per second. We 
This number is great for several reasons. Within the context of Hamilton, it injects high energy into the show in the middle of some emotional moments. Who wants to fight for your land back? Hamilton. I need my right hand man back. Hamilton. Get your right hand man back. You know you gotta get your right hand man back. Hamilton. You gotta put the button to that up the of the bed to get your right hand back. But it's also notable for how it focuses on one of Hamilton's friends, demonstrating that the revolution was not only fought by Americans, but by the French allies like Lafayette. Number 5. The Schuyler Sisters There's nothing rich folks love more than going downtown and slumming it with the poor. This introduction to the two important Schuyler sisters, and Peggy, is really fun and features some powerful female harmonies. Admiring the spirit of revolution in New York, Angelica and Eliza are excited for the future and have a run-in with Burr, who Angelica quickly rejects. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And when I meet Thomas Jefferson, I'm gonna compel him to include women in the sequel. Before the heartbreak, before the action and revolution, before the sisters meet Hamilton even, this is one of the last innocent songs in the show. This musical plays with a lot of pop, and nowhere does it do a better job than with this number. Angelica in particular leads the chorus of ladies working to be included in the sequel. In the greatest city, in the greatest city, in the world. <laughs> Number four, wait for it. Theodosia writes me a letter every day. In a bed warm while her husband is away. Lin Manuel Miranda has said that he gave the best songs he's ever written to Burr, and we can certainly understand that sentiment. Wait for it is a gripping reflection of who Burr is as a character, and the song's themes are so relatable for most people. The fact that he's constantly waiting for his time to come, for his opportunity, while he watches people like Hamilton just go and take what they want, causes him to lament, but he doesn't change his mind. Hamilton doesn't hesitate, he exhibits no restraint, he takes and he takes and he takes and he keeps winning anyway. He believes that all that success and more will come if he just waits for it. Beyond that, it's just a beautifully constructed song weaving Burr's leitmotif into a powerful melody. Number three, Satisfied. Angelica Schuyler! In a testament to Hamilton's incredible staging and story, we rewind the clock to see the Schuyler sisters meeting Hamilton, but from Angelica's perspective. Lin-Manuel Miranda credits choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler with visually rewinding all the way back to even before Helpless, having the choreography literally done in reverse. Falling for Alexander's incredible mind and realizing the two share a special connection, Angelica nonetheless gives him up so that her sister will be happy. Satisfied is so brilliant because it shows us Angelica's incredible intellect through her ability to rap at lightning fast speeds but doesn't skimp when it comes to demanding emotional belts. From this moment on, Angelica joins the pantheon of unrequited love in musical theater, and it hurts. He will never be satisfied, I will never be satisfied. Number two, my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my 
shot Hey yo, I'm just like my country I'm young, scrappy, and hungry And I'm not throwing away my shot We know you wanted this since number 19. While we have seen Hamilton before this number, this song is the perfect introduction to him as a character. It's an explosive mantra that Alexander belts out, shouting his truth, his convictions, to the world around him and daring anyone to stop him. While the song is a little ironic and foreshadows Hamilton eventually, and quite literally throwing his shot away, this genius number is incredibly constructed. The rhyming, the triumphant beat, every single theme introduced here before it comes into play later. There are truly not enough words to describe how wonderful this song is. It took Miranda a year to write my shot, and it shows. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The story of tonight. Raise a glass to this powerful and introspective number. Raise a glass to the four of us. Tomorrow there'll be more of us. Telling the story of tonight. You tell the story of tonight. Raise a glass to freedom. Cabinet battle number one. Politics would be way more fun if all debates were like this. A civics lesson from a slaver. Hey neighbor. Your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the South. We create. You keep ranting. We know who's really doing the plant. Washington on your side. It must be nice to have such incredible lyrical talent. I'm in the cabinet. I am complicit in watching him grabbing at power and kissing it. Washington isn't going to listen to discipline dissidents. This is the difference. This kid is out. Stay alive, reprise. If you didn't cry here, what's your secret? Is he breathing? Is he going to survive this? Who did this, Alexander? Did you know? Mom, I'm so sorry for forgetting what you taught me. The world was wide enough. Burr doesn't wait for it. Hamilton throws away his shot. I should have known. I should have known the world was wide enough for both Hamilton and before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Yorktown. The world turned upside down. The Battle of Yorktown. 1781. Yorktown comes off the heels of the beautiful History Has Its Eyes on You, where Washington laments mistakes made and impresses upon Hamilton that he must remember he is doing this for future generations. Yorktown is the perfect song, because it's everything great about Hamilton condensed into one number. Do you like action? This song has that. Do you like great rapping? It has it too. Do you like emotional and powerful moments tied with incredible staging and choreography? <laughs> yeah, it's got that too. It's tightly written and fast paced, introspective and explosive. How did we know that this plan would work? We had a spy on the inside, that's right. I can leave my this song gives everyone a moment to shine, and is a powerful way to end the story of the revolution from Hamilton's perspective. This song proves why this musical was able to turn the world upside down. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Awesome. Wow. Do you have a clue what happens now? Oceans rise, empires fall.